So I just learned how to read back in 2020. And since then, I've been trying to catch up on all the literature that I've missed. You know, I've been going through some of the classics, you know, like Dostoevsky, Kierkegaard, uh, How to Jelk by Chris Campbell, you know, just, just the classics. Now, let's get one thing straight. I do not read because I enjoy it. I read because I like the smug sense of superiority that comes with quoting a book. I have never read a single book that I've enjoyed, but I always casually drop quotes in conversation. That being said, I decided to do a banned books iceberg because, you know, I've been reading a lot. So we'll start with the most famous banned books and slowly move on to more obscure ones, okay? Let's begin. Uncle Tom's Cabin was a book written in 1851 about the horrors of slavery. You might know it best from being assigned to read it in an English class in high school, but never reading a single page. Or was that just me? This book was way ahead of its time, okay? Because back when it was written, a lot of people thought slavery was pretty cool. It would be another 15 years before the Emancipation Proclamation was signed into law. The book follows Tom, a middle-aged slave from Kentucky, and I'm not gonna get into the details, but as you can imagine, Tom was not living the best life. He was beaten and abused on a regular basis and eventually got killed after refusing to give up the location of two other slaves who ran away. The character of Tom was actually based on a real person named Josiah Henson, who fled from Maryland up to Canada where he eventually got his freedom and became an author. The author of the book, Harriet Beecher Stowe, was a devout Christian who hated slavery. And Uncle Tom's Cabin would be to this day the most important piece of abolitionist literature ever. A lot of people credit her with popularizing the abolitionist movement, so uh, I think it should come as no surprise that this book was banned in the South for obvious reasons. To Kill a Mockingbird is another book that I was supposed to read in high school, but I don't think I made it past the cover, okay? I'm gonna be honest, I was kind of a degenerate back then. I was probably too busy doing nitrous oxide and banging the lunch lady in the cafeteria after hours to be bothered. The book takes place in 1930s Alabama. It follows a prominent attorney who chooses to represent a black man named Tom Robinson, who is accused of R-wording a white woman. Now, if you know anything about American history, you already know things don't end well for Tom. Despite overwhelming evidence in his favor, the all-white jury said that Tom was guilty. He later tried to escape from prison, but was shot by a guard on his way out. The reason this book was banned in a lot of schools was because it used the N-word more than a Call of Duty lobby in 2014. Even today, there's still controversy on the use of the N-word in this book. Like a teacher got in trouble for reading it in class. Like grandma says, so it ain't your fault. I guess it ain't your fault if Uncle Atticus is an lover. Can you please stop saying the N-word? That teacher reading aloud from To Kill a Mockingbird, a 1960s novel that uses a racial slur nearly 50 times. It's required reading in a number of classrooms. However, Mustang School spokespeople tell us it will no longer be read aloud in their classrooms. Of Mice and Men is a really dark story about two friends, George and Larry, trying to survive the Great Depression. The two arrive in California in the 30s trying to find some work on a farm. Larry is mentally impaired and gets the two of them in trouble constantly throughout the book. At one point, Larry accidentally kills the wife of the farm owner and an angry mob forms to try to lynch him. But before the mob gets to Larry, George whacks him to save himself. The book has been heavily censored and banned in many schools because of profanity, morbid and depressing themes, and derogatory language towards African Americans, women, and the developmentally disabled. Now, you guys gotta remember, this book came out before HBO, so it was pretty wild at the time, but compared to a random episode of The Sopranos, this is like a fucking Dr. Seuss book. Oh! The language on you. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna let Louis C.K. describe this book because he can do it way better than I can. Now, Huckleberry Finn is a dirty little homeless little white trash creep. And the main problem is that he won't stop saying n****. The N-word appears over 200 times in the book. Like, even Quentin Tarantino would say that's excessive. And, like, one of the main characters is a runaway slave named N-word Jim. Okay, that's his name. And the main villain is named Injun Joe, just to give you an idea. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, oh, it's a product of its time. We can't judge it based on the morals of today. But even when this book came out in 1885, it was described as racist, coarse, trashy, inelegant, irreligious, obsolete, inaccurate, and mindless. Captain Underpants, okay, this one is kind of, kind of random, kind of doesn't really fit in with the other ones, but believe it or not, Captain Underpants, is one of the most banned books in America. A lot of schools banned them because parents were complaining that the books were crude, violent, and inappropriate. 
One specific book, The Adventures of Ook and Gluck, Kung Fu Cavemen from the Future, would be completely pulled from production because I guess it's racist against Asians. Like, I actually read through it, but it, it didn't really seem that racist to me. I don't know what people are bitching about. Even though the book was written in 2010, the ban didn't happen until 2021 after a psycho murdered a bunch of Asian women in Canada. Creator Dave Pilkey said that it was brought to my attention that this book contains harmful racial stereotypes and passively racist imagery. It was and is wrong and harmful to my Asian readers, friends and family, and to all Asian people. I, I don't know, man. L like I said, I read through it. Maybe I'm out of touch, but I couldn't find anything that was that racist. Like there's a character that's a parody of Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there's this thing called Marxism and I don't really know what it is, but my dad and Fox News says it's bad, so I, I think it's bad. Marxism comes from a fella named Karl Marx and his sidekick Frederick Engels. Basically, Marx said that if you work for a boss, your labor is being exploited by your boss. And the only way to end the exploitation of labor is for the means of production to be owned equally by the workers instead of a few rich guys. So essentially, instead of these few rich schmucks owning all the businesses, the ownership would be distributed equally among the workers of that business. Or something like that. It's too complicated for my pea brain to comprehend. Anyways, this book was banned in Nazi Germany, but you might also be surprised to know that it was banned in Turkey. And it was actually only recently unbanned in 2013. It's honestly not that surprising though. Turkey has a long history of censorship. Especially when it comes to a certain, uh, ethnic cleansing situation, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, and actually it was banned in the United States. Kind of. I guess banned isn't really the right word. More like repressed. Because back in the 50s, if you got accused of being a communist, it was sort of like being at an orgy and being accused of having AIDS. So a lot of bookstores and libraries refused to carry any of Marx's books out of fear of being labeled communists. And that's only a few examples of it being banned throughout history. There's many, many more. Mein Kampf, or My Struggle, is a book written by a certain Austrian painter. The book, which was written while he was in prison after a failed coup, laid out his political goals. If I had to summarize it in two words, it would be Jews bad. It's one of the most controversial books in history and it's been banned all over the world at different points in time. In Romania, in 1993, local authorities banned the sale of the book and confiscated copies. There was a huge legal battle that ended in the ban being lifted a few months later. In the Netherlands, it was banned until 2018. And in Germany, the state of Bavaria, who owns the copyright, actually tried to stop any new copies from being printed. But today, you can find copies in most libraries, but they're all heavily annotated. For a short time, it was even banned on Amazon before being reinstated a few days later. Catch on the Rye, I'm actually reading this one right now. It's about a edgy teenager who goes out to New York City and does a bunch of grimy stuff, okay? He smokes, he drinks, he curses, he bangs whores. He does what he wants. It's also kind of a critique on the phoniness of society. Now keep in mind, this book came out in the 50s and I think they use the word goddamn about 40 times per page. So I'm not really surprised that people back then were trying to keep it out of schools. But to this day, it continues to be in the top 10 most banned books in schools in the United States since it came out, basically. The main character and narrator of Catcher in the Rye is Holden Colefield, a young man who feels alienated from society and feels like everybody's fake. He can't make a genuine connection with anybody despite trying, and this makes him extremely depressed. So much so that he plans on running away and working on a farm in the middle of nowhere. He's what you would call a literally me character, and a lot of people connect with him on a very deep level, including myself to some degree. But the weird thing is, a lot of psychos throughout history really love this book. Specifically, Mark David Chapman, the guy who shot John Lennon. In fact, he loved this book so much that he wanted to legally change his name to Holden Caulfield. During his trial, he quoted the book, and on the night he shot Lennon, he had a copy of it on him. By the way, if you're wondering why I look different, it's because it's been like two weeks since I originally recorded everything. My apartment was completely taken over by mold, okay? It was like the last of us up in this bitch. Literal mushrooms were growing out of my walls. I am not kidding. Look, here, here's some photos. Man, this reminds me of that 4chan post where that guy had mushrooms growing out of his toilet and then he ate them. But I didn't eat them, I swear. The Diary of Anne Frank is a collection of writings from the Diary of Anne Frank. Hence the name. 
So Anne Frank was a young Jewish girl in the Netherlands who fled Germany with her family to escape the Nazis. But when the Nazis took over the Netherlands, they were forced to hide in an attic for two years. So she detailed her experiences in her diary all the way up to 1944 when her family was betrayed and taken to a concentration camp where Anne would later pass away from typhus. Now you might think that this book was banned because of the dark subject matter that would give kids nightmares or something like that. But no, apparently it was banned because she talked about her genitals. There are a few entries in the diary where Anne, you know, she was going through puberty. So she was describing the female anatomy in vivid detail and wondering, you know, about her changing into a woman. Then there was another entry where she talked about having a crush on another girl, okay? It was pretty, pretty explicit. Most recently, it's been pulled from all schools in Florida and Texas. No surprise. And it's been either banned or censored in multiple school districts all over the US. The Quran, I'm sure that the Quran has been banned historically, but at the moment, I don't think it's officially banned in any country. But the Bible, on the other hand, is banned in multiple countries, including Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Afghanistan, the Maldives, Libya, Iran, and Yemen, among others. The Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible is even more banned. It was banned in Nazi Germany, Russia, and is currently still banned in Singapore. Alice in Wonderland. We've all seen the movie. I'm pretty sure we all know what it's about. This book was banned in schools in the 1960s because parents thought it promoted drug use. Mostly because of the hookah-smoking caterpillar who offered Alice mushrooms that would make her grow bigger on some Mario shit. But this book was written in 1865. I'm pretty sure people didn't even know about magic mushrooms back then. If you think that's weird, listen to this shit. It was banned in China in 1931 because it portrayed humans and animals on the same level of intelligence. Seriously, the governor of Hunan province said this quote, animals should not use human language. And it was disastrous to put animals and human beings on the same level. Harry Potter. The Harry Potter books have been denounced by a lot of Christian groups for containing occult or satanic practices. Yeah, Christians, uh, you know, we're not big on witchcraft. Like, we used to kill people just in case they were witches. It's been banned at certain Christian schools and stuff, but I don't think there's been an outright ban in any countries. But that's not from lack of trying, all right? And I always found the controversy weird because... JK Rowling is a practicing Christian, but I don't know, who knows, maybe she's a double agent. I remember back in the day my mom wouldn't let me watch the Harry Potter movies because she said they were evil. You know how embarrassing that shit was? To be the one kid in the entire school that didn't see Harry Potter, alright? Everybody was talking about it, and I couldn't join in, I felt like a fucking leper, alright? I was like an outcast. I had to smuggle that shit into my house and watch it in secret like I lived in North Korea. Charlotte's Web is about a pig named Wilbur who makes friends with a spider named Charlotte. When Charlotte finds out that Wilbur is gonna get turned into bacon, she starts weaving words into her web like radiant or wonderful. And the farmers take that as a sign to not slaughter the pig. But then she dies. Cause well, she's a spider, they don't really live that long. A parent group successfully lobbied to ban Charlotte's web from Kansas schools because the themes of death were, I guess, too much for kids to handle. Oh, and they also said this. Talking animals are unnatural and blasphemous as humans are the highest level of God's creation. Green eggs and mother sucking ham was banned in China for 26 years because apparently it portrayed Marxism in a bad light. And I don't know, man, maybe I gotta reread Green Eggs and Ham because I don't remember there being any complex underlying themes, but hey, Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was just about odd colored breakfast food. 1984 is one of those books that everyone references, but hasn't actually read. I am one of those people. It's about a dystopian future where an entity called Big Brother controls everybody's lives. It's kind of a warning against totalitarianism, which is why it was banned in the Soviet Union until 1988. But funnily enough, it has also been banned in the United States for being pro-communism. So I don't, I don't really know how that jives, but go off. I just wanted to clarify something real quick. It wasn't actually banned in the sense that the government made it illegal or something like that. Except for very rare exceptions, none of these books have been outright banned in the US thanks to the First Amendment. So when I say banned, I mean like it was banned from schools or libraries or certain bookstores, things like that. Like it might have been extremely hard to get your hands on one, but you would not you know, go to jail for having a copy of one of these books or anything like that. Animal Farm is another classic George Orwell book about a group of animals led by a pig named Napoleon who take over a farm from an evil human farmer named Mr. Jones. They then establish their own farm and Napoleon the pig becomes the authorized... They then establish their own farm and Napoleon the pig becomes an authoritarian putz who treats the rest of the animals just as bad as Mr. Jones. 
Napoleon is based on Joseph Stalin, so it should come as no surprise that the book was banned in the Soviet Union. And it's currently banned in Cuba and Kenya, and heavily censored in China for being critical of the communist revolution. The Hacker Playbook by Joshua Cummings is a book that teaches you how to hack. Now, there's a lot of books out there that teach people how to hack because the thought process is that if you're gonna work in cybersecurity, you need to be able to think like a criminal. So the book goes over how to steal people's data, break into their accounts, how to figure out their passwords and stuff like that. The book has been banned in all California prisons because I guess it's just way too good, right? You can't have these criminals hack fucking NASA from the prison computers, so I get it. One of the main topics covered in the book is identity theft, which is a huge problem in the US. There's people who hack into websites and steal a bunch of people's data and information and then leak it on the dark web. That's why Aura is the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an all-in-one digital security tool with a VPN, antivirus, and identity theft protection that keeps you safe on the web in multiple different ways. See, Aura scans the dark web to make sure your info isn't on there. And if it is, they'll alert you. And that's not all they do. You see, there's these people called data brokers who basically take your information off of websites you have an account on and sell it to shady companies. So if you're getting like 15 robocalls a day, that's why. Now you can request these brokers to remove your data, but then you'd have to do that like every single month. So that would get annoying. Luckily, Aura does this for you automatically. So you'll be getting a lot less spam. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like I said, they have a VPN and an antivirus, and they'll even monitor your credit cards and alert you if there's any suspicious charges. Something your bank should already be doing, but let's be honest, most banks are pretty dog shit. I tried Aura, and I was blown away by how much of my data was out there on the internet. I guess that's what I get for signing up for Hustlers University. But hey, don't take my word for it. Check the link in my description, or go to aura.com slash Dantavius for a 14-day free trial. And see for yourself if your personal information has been leaked online. Again, that's aura.com slash Dantavius, or the link in the description. And thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. James and the Giant Peach is about a boy named James whose parents were eaten by a rhinoceros who escaped from the zoo. So James was forced to live with his two evil aunts. One day James meets a mysterious old man who gives him some magic crystals. James, being an absolute schlemiel, drops the crystals next to a peach tree and one of the peaches grows to be the size of a truck. Oh, and also there's a tunnel inside the peach which James goes inside and then he meets a bunch of giant insects who become his friends. And then the peach flies, I guess, and they turn it into a hot air balloon using the spider silk and they fly all the way to New York. Yeah, it's a pretty weird book. And the film adaptations are incredibly disturbing. It's been banned from schools in Wisconsin and Florida for containing references to alcohol, tobacco, child abuse, and for using the word ass one time. Also, apparently the spider is considered too sexy and uh kind of have to agree. Actually, there's a huge controversy with all of Roald Dahl's books because the publisher who owns all the rights to his books started changing them to be more appropriate for a modern audience, which is ironic because while he was alive, he specifically told his publishers to not change a single comma in one of his books. Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies is a Nobel Prize winning novel about a group of young boys who get stranded on an island. At first, they try to organize and figure out how to survive, but it doesn't take long before it turns into absolute chaos and anarchy, and they turn into paranoid savages who start killing each other. The central theme is how people lose their humanity when their survival isn't guaranteed, and how quickly so-called civilized people can turn into monsters. I mean, it's a pretty heavy book, it's dark as hell, so... I'm really not surprised that it's constantly getting banned from schools. In fact, it's the eighth most frequently banned book in America. The Pentagon Papers. This one isn't a book so much as a report, but they were a collection of documents detailing the history of the US involvement in Vietnam from World War II to 1968. On June 17, 1967, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara ordered a commission to create these documents behind the back of Richard Nixon. It took a year and a half to compile everything, and when they were finished, there was over 3,000 pages. And these papers revealed a lot of crazy stuff that the US was doing under people's noses. First of all, most people think that the Vietnam War started in the 60s, but we were involved long before that, okay? You see, the US government had this fellow known as Ngo Dinh Diem, who was described by military officials as an unpopular and incapable leader that should be replaced. 
And it turns out to be very true because in 1963, Diem was overthrown by a US-backed coup. And that was only the beginning of the fuckery. When Lyndon Johnson got into office, he was so desperate to win that he was ordering more and more troops and he bombed North Vietnam without congressional approval. Then when Nixon got into office, he started secretly bombing Cambodia. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back for Daniel Ellsberg, one of the guys who helped write the papers. In 1971, he leaked all this juicy intel to the New York Times, which just so happened to be around the time of Nixon's re-election, so couldn't have that. The US Department of Justice got involved and filed a restraining order to prevent newspapers from talking about this shit show. And this went all the way to the Supreme Court, who voted 6-3 to three in favor of the New York Times. And Daniel Ellsberg, the guy who blew this whole thing up, was charged with conspiracy, espionage, and stealing government property, but the case kind of fell apart after the whole Watergate thing. Turns out Nixon hired people to break into Daniel's office and find dirt on him. The jungle. Upton Sinclair was what's known as a muckraker, meaning he was exposing the stuff that was really going on in America. The dirty, grimy underbelly of the business world. His most famous book was a novel called The Jungle, and the point of the jungle was to expose the horrible working conditions of immigrants working in Chicago's meatpacking plants, who Sinclair compared to wage slaves. But it was more influential for shining a light on just how disgusting the meatpacking industry was, okay? The plants were unsanitary, unregulated, people didn't wash the equipment, they were selling diseased meat, okay? It was absolutely disgusting. The book hit so hard that it led to Congress passing the Meat Inspection Act the same year it came out. Now, Sinclair was an outspoken socialist, so his book was banned in Yugoslavia in the 20s because of the socialist themes. It was also one of the many, many, many books that were banned in Nazi Germany and burned. And ironically, it was banned in East Germany in the 50s for not being communist enough. And then it was banned in Korea in 1985 for reasons. The works of Albert Einstein. Einstein is probably the most famous theoretical physicist of all time. Apart from being a pioneer in quantum mechanics and developing the theory of relativity, he also famously definitively proved that the female orgasm is not real. A lot of people don't know about that. Anyways, all of his works were banned in Germany in the 1930s and 40s, cause, well, you know. I Am Jazz is a kid's book about a transgender child based on the real life experience of Jazz Jennings, who also stars in a reality TV show on TLC of the same name. It's currently number 13 on the American Literature Association's list of most banned books. Grapes of Wrath is about a family who leaves Oklahoma to go to California for work during the Great Depression. But when they get there, it wasn't what they expected. There was barely any work, and they kept running into all sorts of problems. By the end of the book, half the family either dies, gets arrested, or runs away. It was an immediate hit when it got released, the bestseller of 1939. But not everybody liked it. It was called Communist Propaganda, and was banned and burned all over the US. It especially pissed off the Associated Farmers of California, who lobbied the local governments to ban the book. And in Kern County, it was outright banned from all libraries and schools. But in 1941, after receiving a shit ton of backlash, they undid the ban. And get this, they said the only reason they banned the book in the first place was to draw more attention to it because they liked its message. Bunch of fucking stunads. Frankenstein, it was banned in apartheid South Africa for being indecent, objectionable, or obscene. Owning a copy of it could get you a fine of $1,000 or up to five years in prison. Rage is a book written by Stephen King, and the only book in this entire video that was banned by the author himself. Stephen King is one of the most prolific writers of all time. Dude has written like 417,000 books just this year alone. Back in the 70s and 80s, he was actually writing more books than his publishers could put out, so he started writing under the pseudonym Richard Bachman to get around that. One of the books he wrote during this time was called Rage, which was about a disturbed high school student who shoots his algebra teacher in the face and then holds his entire class hostage at gunpoint before getting whacked by the police. The thing that's most disturbing about this book is that it has a lot of parallels to real life situations. And actually, there were quite a few violent incidents at schools that were inspired by the novel. There was one particular incident where a student whacked eight of his classmates at a high school in Kentucky. A copy of Rage was found in his locker, and this was the incident that finally made Stephen King decide to take the book out of circulation. To this day, no new copies of the book have been printed. You can buy old copies, but it'll cost you a few hundred bucks at least. 
Fahrenheit 451 is a novel about a dystopian future in which many books and media are censored and people are force-fed dumbed-down entertainment and propaganda. Most books were destroyed after World War II, and there are people called firemen whose entire job it is to find and burn any books they can get their hands on. Ironically, the book was burned in apartheid South Africa. It also has been subject to heavy censorship in U.S. schools for the use of swear words, drug references, and other naughty things. There was a whole nother version created specifically for high schools that tones it down a lot. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Judy Bloom, author of childhood classics like Super Fudge, Double Fudge, and Fudge Mania. She also wrote Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret, which follows a young girl struggling with puberty and her faith. Her mom is Christian, her dad is Jewish, so she struggles with her religious identity. The book was heavily challenged in the 80s and removed from a lot of school libraries because of discussion about sexuality and religion. At the time, that was pretty taboo to talk about, especially in kids' books. So yeah, a lot of school districts outright banned it from their curriculums on the grounds of being profane, immoral, and offensive. Catch-22 was a satirical war novel that took place during World War II and was based off the experiences of the author himself and other soldiers that he was stationed with. It kind of makes fun of the absurdity of war and explores the horrors of war, but in a funny way. When it first came out, it was super polarizing. Half the people who read it thought it was genius satire, others thought it was a dumb piece of garbage that made no sense. It was banned in libraries in Ohio and Texas for profane and inappropriate language, including the use of the word whores when referring to women. The Color Purple is about a black teenager growing up in rural Georgia in the 1910s who was abused by her father. Honestly, this book is pretty freaking dark, like this girl goes through some shit, okay? Besides the obvious bans in schools, it was also banned from all Texas state prisons in 2017 for explicit language and graphic depictions of violence, which is just outright goofy if you ask me, okay? It's goofy and, and silly. The Satanic Verses is a book that has ruined its author's life more than any other book ever. So, a little bit of background. The Satanic Verses refers to an alleged incident in the Prophet Muhammad's life where he was basically tricked by Satan into praising the pagan gods of Mecca before being corrected by the angel Gabriel. This event was recorded by some early Muslim biographers of Muhammad, but it's contested if it actually happened or not. These days, it's considered super blasphemous and an insult to the Prophet. So, Salman Rushdie wrote a book called The Satanic Verses that references this incident, and it did not go over well. When the book first dropped in the UK, it was met with a ton of backlash. The book's publisher was getting hundreds of phone calls from angry Muslims, and there were demonstrations all over England with thousands of protesters burning the book. That's when it started getting banned left and right. And it's not just in Muslim countries either, okay, that's a given. But it was also banned in Thailand, South Africa, India, and Sri Lanka, just so, you know, they wouldn't have to deal with these incidents. And that was just the beginning. Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini issued a fatwa against Rushdie on February 14, 1989, which essentially gave the green light for anybody to whack Rushdie on sight. I am informing all brave Muslims of the world that the author of the Satanic Verses, a text written, edited, and published against Islam, the Prophet of Islam, and the Quran, along with all the editors and publishers aware of its contents, are condemned to death. I call on all my valiant Muslims, wherever they may be in the world, to kill them without delay, so that no one will dare insult the sacred beliefs of Muslims henceforth. And whoever is killed in this cause will be a martyr, Allah willing. Meanwhile, if someone has access to the author of the book but is incapable of carrying out the execution, he should inform the people so that Rushdie is punished for his actions. Then, in 1990, Khomeini's successor Khamenei added that if a non-Muslim becomes aware of Rushdie's whereabouts and has the ability to execute him quicker than Muslims, it is incumbent on Muslims to pay a reward or fee in return for this action. And to sweeten the pot, he put a sweet $3 million bounty on his head. So now the dude is basically John Wick, persona non grata. Everybody in the world wants to whack him. This caused Rushdie to go into hiding for over a decade with a fake identity and around the clock security. For the last few years, he's been out of hiding, but uh, he, he should have stayed hidden because last year he was stabbed 10 times while giving a speech. 
Oh, and he wasn't the only guy that was affected by this. For example, one guy who translated the book into Japanese was stabbed to death outside his apartment. The Chocolate War. Now, you might think that this is about uh, Nestle's exploitation of child slave labor in Africa to produce their chocolate bars, but it's not about that at all. The Chocolate War follows a kid named Jerry who goes to an all-boys Catholic school and he's terrorized by a gang of students known as the Vigils. The Vigils force people to do pranks on other students or participate in humiliating rituals, so it's basically any college frat. But Jerry doesn't take any of their shit, so the Vigils basically ruin his life and beat the shit out of him multiple times. Due to the offensive language, violence, and sexual content, the book has been frequently banned from school libraries. And Tango Makes Three is a children's book about two male penguins who raise a chick together. And it's actually based on a real pair of penguins at the Central Park Zoo who, I guess, were gay and they adopted a bang baby penguin together. It's been challenged for its homosexual themes and been deemed inappropriate for children. As of last year, it's pretty much banned in Florida schools as part of the Don't Say Gay Bill, which bans any mention of sexual orientation from kindergarten to fourth grade. The Anarchist Cookbook. The Anarchist Cookbook had a bunch of instructions on how to make extremely illegal things like LSD, mustard gas, poison, explosives, and a bunch of other fun stuff. In the book's intro, the author wrote, I believe that the people in power, not only political power, but also economic and social power, will not violently give up that power to the people. Power is not a material possession that can be given. It is the ability to act. Power must be taken. It must never be given. Now, this book has been linked to a lot of violent acts since the 1970s. I I'm just gonna run through a few of them. The 1976 plane hijacking by Croatian nationalists, the Oklahoma City bombings, the bombing of FBI headquarters by Puerto Rican nationals in 1981, the abortion clinic bombings of the 1980s, Columbine, the Aurora movie theater shooting, and many, many more. The people who carried out these horrible attacks used instructions from the anarchist cookbook, or at least had read it. William Powell, the author, would later become a Christian years after the book was published and regretted ever writing it. He tried to take it out of circulation, but it was too late. The publisher already owned the rights to it and was making a shit ton of money. I'm talking millions of copies sold. Today, the book is completely banned in the UK after a neo-Nazi was arrested after his terrorist plot was foiled by the police. When police raided his home, they found pipe bombs, poison, and multiple copies of the anarchist cookbook. It's also banned in Australia for that very same reason. Lady Chatterley's Lover was an erotic novel by British author D.H. Lawrence about a working class guy who was banging a married upper class woman. He wrote it in 1928 and it was super dicey for the time. Nobody would publish it. So he released it privately and later a heavily censored version was published, sort of like a PG-13 version. Then in 1960, long after Lawrence's death, the full, uncut, uncensored version was released to the publisher and quickly sold 200,000 copies. The problem with this was just a year before, the UK passed the Obscene Publications Act of 1959. So they came after Penguin Publishing to try and get the book taken out of circulation, but they failed. And this wasn't the only time the book had issues with obscenity laws. In Japan and India, publishers of the book were taken to court and lost, and they had to pay huge fines and take the books out of circulation in those countries. It was also banned in Australia for a few years. Even in the United States, the uncensored version of the book was completely banned in 1929 for obscenity, and if you were caught with it, the police would take it away and burn it. Honestly, I read some of this book just to see how bad it was, and it was pretty fucking tame, okay? It was on the same level as The Lusty Argonian Maid, which was a much better book in my opinion. Imagine if these people in the 1920s found out about Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction. They would jump off a bridge immediately. Franklin the Turtle books. Now, you guys are probably familiar with my absolute burning hatred for Franklin the Turtle, but you might not be aware that a lot of his books have been banned because of disturbing subject matter. So let's go through some of them. Look at this man, absolutely disgusting. Franklin fakes an injury to get Percocet. Franklin deserts the Marines. Awful, awful. Franklin creates a SoundCloud account. Disgusting. Franklin and the Bear from Grinder. Okay. Franklin launches a drone strike on civilians. Franklin had to do it to him. 
I don't know what that means, but it can't be good. Franklin claims his inheritance early. Oh, good lord. Franklin becomes an occultist Nazi. Not surprised there. Franklin and the babysitter. What is it? What the fuck is this, bro? This one's actually real. Franklin gets it left out for being gay. Franklin joins the Taliban. I mean, need I say more? I think I made my point. Literally the worst children's role model ever. Little Black Sambo. Okay, let me, let me just read you this first sentence of the synopsis. Sambo is a South Indian boy who lives with his father and mother named Black Jumbo and Black Mumbo. That's racist. Okay, so uh, you can see why this one might be a bit controversial. In Japan, for some reason, it's super popular. Like it's one of the most beloved children's book in the entire country, okay? And their version is an African kid instead of an Indian, so it's, it's even more racist. After getting a ton of backlash and threats of boycotts, the publishers of the book in Japan stopped printing it, but only for a few years. All quiet on the Western front, you guys might be familiar with the Netflix movie, but it's actually based on this novel written by Eric Relmark, based on his service during World War I and how horrible and traumatizing it was for the soldiers involved, and the difficulty they had adjusting back into civilian life. The book was banned and burned in Nazi Germany for criticizing the German army. Sophie's Choice and Schindler's Ark. Sophie's Choice was about a young Polish Catholic mother who was sent to a concentration camp and forced to choose between one of her children to send to the gas chamber. Schindler's Ark is the book that Schindler's List is based off of. It's the true story of a German businessman who saved a bunch of Jews during World War II. Both books were banned in Lebanon for containing positive depictions of Jews. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? This is probably gonna be the dumbest entry on this list. So the book Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see is a children's picture book about a fucking bear. That's it, like there's nothing controversial or bad about it at all. But the Texas State Board of Education banned the book from all schools in the state, and that's because these geniuses mixed up the author of the book Bill Martin Jr. with another Bill Martin who wrote Ethical Marxism, The Categorical Imperative of Liberation. So these schlemiels thought it was the same guy and this brown bear picture book was a covert piece of communist propaganda or something, okay? These are the people who are running our schools. So that's great to know. The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. This sounds like the title of Mindy Kaling's next show, but no, it's a graphic novel about a young Native American kid who goes to a mostly white high school off the reservation. If you go to Wikipedia, you'll find a long ass list of schools that it's been banned in for a bunch of different reasons. Violence, drugs, profanity, gambling, racism, everything that's fun. The Lorax is a Dr. Seuss book where the central theme is maybe, perhaps, we shouldn't cut down all the trees and destroy the environment. It was banned in a California school in 1989 after heavy lobbying from the members of the lumberjack community. No, I am not kidding. Vloggers were so upset by this children's book that they released their own book called The True Axe to show kids the wonders of deforestation. Where's Waldo? So apparently, in one Where's Waldo book, you can see a booby. But it wasn't even like a whole booby, it was just a side boob, no nipple. But still, that version of the Where's Waldo book was immediately taken out of circulation once the mammary was detected. And now the book is selling for hundreds of dollars. Tropic of Cancer is a novel first released in France in 1934 about a struggling American writer living in the slums of Paris among whores, pimps, drunks, and druggies. When it was released, the book was widely considered extremely dirty. One American critic said that this is not a book, it is a cesspool, an open sewer, a pit of putrefaction, a slimy gathering of all that is rotten in the debris of human depravity. So yeah, it's dirtier than your mom's underwear drawer. After it was released in France, US Customs banned any imports of it into the States, and when it was finally published in America in 1961, there were over 60 obscenity lawsuits filed against the book's publisher. And this is another one that got taken all the way up to the Supreme Court who ruled that it could not be banned under the First Amendment. However, it was banned in Canada and the UK until the 1960s, and it was also banned in Australia and Finland until the 70s. This entry is called a shockingly high amount of shit in the Irish Free State. The Irish Free State was a country that existed from 1922 to 1937 following the brutal Irish War of Independence. Despite being called a free state, it was still technically part of the British Empire, 
it just had a lot more independence than before. I guess while the free state existed, a shit ton of books were banned, because back then the Irish were very heavily Catholic, so any books that featured promiscuity or talked about coitus were out of the question. The Spanish Civil War. When it comes to books about the Spanish Civil War, the book The Spanish Civil War is THE book on the Spanish Civil War. That sentence probably made no sense. What I'm trying to say is that historian Hugh Thomas wrote the most comprehensive book on the SCW ever. So just a brief summary, the Spanish Civil War was fought between the Republicans and the Nationalists. The Nationalists won and controlled Spain through Francisco Franco, who was in power until his death in 1975. During his time as dictator, the book was illegal, not just banned, illegal. If you had a copy, they would throw your ass in jail. One guy, Octavio Horta, was sentenced to two years in prison after trying to smuggle two suitcases full of copies into Spain. The Second Sex is a 1949 novel written by French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir. It discusses the treatment of women in society at the time and how, historically, women were treated as the lesser sex or the second sex. In many ways, it was ahead of its time. On the very first page, Simone was asking, what is a woman? God damn, bro, she beat Matt Walsh by like 70 years. But that's where the similarities between Simone and Walsh end, because this book has widely been credited as the basis for the modern day feminist movement, AKA second wave feminist. The book was banned in Franco Spain on the basis of fuck these hoes. And it was also featured on the Vatican's list of prohibited books. Ulysses was a sort of modern version of the Odyssey, except instead of ancient Greece, it takes place in 1920s Ireland. It was also very dirty. And I, I can see why people thought this one was obscene, because there's one scene in the book where the main character, Leopold Bloom, gets a whore to stick her entire arm up his tuchus. Like, it's not super graphic in the way that it's written, but it was clear that she was elbows deep in that man. A panel of judges in New York deemed that the book was obscene and it was banned in the US. In fact, the US post office was charged with burning any copies they could get their hands on. And it was also banned in the United Kingdom until 1936. Operation Dark Heart, spy craft and special ops on the front lines of Afghanistan and the path to victory is a memoir by intelligence officer, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer detailing his time spent in Afghanistan in 2003. There were a bunch of juicy details revealed in this book. The initial release of the book in 2010 was a small batch, only 9,500 copies. As soon as they hit the shelves, the US government came and bought every single copy for around $50,000 and destroyed them all because apparently the book contained a shit ton of classified information and that was somehow overlooked by the editors. But that didn't matter because Schaefer had already sent a couple hundred copies to critics who leaked the uncut, uncensored version. The whole controversy only gave the book a ton of free publicity and turned it into a huge success. Now, it's been speculated that the books didn't actually contain any classified information, but someone at the Department of Justice was beefing with Schaefer and they just wanted to fuck with him but that backfired spectacularly. Why We Can't Wait is a book written by Martin Luther King detailing the struggle of black people for civil rights and how nonviolent protest was the best way to achieve their goals. The book was banned in apartheid South Africa for reasons that should be very obvious. The Iron Heel is a 1908 dystopian sci-fi novel about a corrupt and repressive fascist oligarchy that takes over the US in the early 20th century. And it's eventually overthrown by a socialist revolution. I think it was the first dystopian future book actually, and it created its own genre. Like 1984 and Fahrenheit 451 were heavily influenced by this book and they probably wouldn't exist without it. It was very popular in the Soviet Union because of its pro-socialist theme, but uh, not very popular in 1930s Germany, or America in the 50s for that matter. Tombstone, The Great Famine. When Mao Zedong, the first communist leader of China, came into power in 1949, the Chinese economy was absolute dog shit. They had to industrialize and modernize. They were a mostly rural nation with barely any industrialization, so Mao wanted to modernize China, so he pushed people out of the countryside and into cities. As a result, millions of people starved to death. Obviously, there were other factors too, but yeah, the point is, a lot of people starved mostly because of this policy. Chinese journalist Yang Jisheng spent three years interviewing survivors of the famine and compiling data. The most definitive and comprehensive account of the Great Chinese Famine ever made. 
and it was published in Hong Kong and banned in mainland China because, you know, it's China. Actually, I'm surprised the dude is still alive because he still lives in Beijing to this day. And I think he's surprised he's still alive because in the opening of the book, he said, I call this book Tombstone. It is a tombstone for my father who died of hunger in 1959 for the 36 million Chinese who also died of hunger, for the system that caused their death, and perhaps for myself for writing this book. So shout out to him, man. Unmasked inside Antifa's radical plan to destroy democracy. Andy Nyo is a guy who has very strong feelings about Antifa. Now, I don't know much about Antifa, but this guy seems to not really like them so much. So he wrote a book titled Unmasked, Inside Antifa's Radical Plan to Destroy Democracy. Howells, a bookstore in the Portland area, took the book off its shelves after people started protesting them for carrying it. They put out a statement about it saying, this book will not be placed on our shelves. We will not promote it. That said, it will remain in our online catalog. We carry a lot of books that we find abhorrent, as well as those that we treasure. Captain Underpants and the Sensational Saga of Sir Stinks Alive. This one is banned in a bunch of schools because one of the main characters, Harold, grows up to be gay. The fucking dictionary. Yeah, I'm not kidding. The 2010 version of Merriam-Webster's dictionary was banned because it contained a definition for fellatio. Gay is Okay, A Christian Perspective is a book written by a gay Christian pastor in Malaysia. The book argues that the Bible doesn't actually condemn homosexuality and the verses that people use against gay people are actually misinterpreted. The book was banned in Malaysia after it was released because they did not think gay was okay. The writings of Shen Kong Wen. You've probably never heard of this guy because he wasn't really big outside of China, but in China, he was considered one of the best fiction writers of all time. But the Chinese government didn't really like him too much, so his books were frequently banned throughout the country. And funnily enough, his books were also banned in Taiwan until recently. This didn't really have anything to do with his actual stories. He just refused to swear allegiance to the communists or the nationalists. And outside of his writings, he was pretty critical of both. In the 1970s, he was sent to a re-education camp. And when he got out, he never wrote another novel again. Another Country is a novel about a group of people living in New York City in the 1950s. And let me tell you, this book has everything that was taboo at the time. Racism, gay stuff, extramarital affairs, illegal substances, interracial couples, domestic abuse, violence, you name it, this book has it. It follows a black jazz musician who's broke and has to resort to banging dudes for money. Oh, and he's also a drug addict. And he later ends his life by jumping off a bridge. It, it, it's, it's a pretty heavy novel, I gotta say. The book was deemed obscene in New Orleans and banned by the state's government. And imports of the novel were also banned in Australia. The Da Vinci Code is a book that asserts that the Holy Grail isn't a cup like most people believe, but rather it is the bloodline of Jesus Christ. But wait, wait, wait a minute though, Jesus never had kids. Well, according to this book, he did have children with Mary Magdalene. And apparently Leonardo da Vinci knew about it and put like clues in his paintings. And there's also a secret society whose sole purpose is to keep people from finding out about it. On the surface, it sounds pretty interesting, but this book has heavily been criticized as being a piece of trash in a literary sense. Stephen King called it the literary equivalent of Kraft Mac and Cheese. Actually, I can't tell if that's meant to be a compliment or not because I fucking love Kraft Mac and Cheese. The book is banned in the Vatican. Da Vinci Code is banned in the Vatican. Obviously, no surprise there, but it's also banned in the Indian state of Nagaland and in some places in the Philippines. But that's just the book. The movie adaptation was banned in a lot of places. Egypt, Lebanon, Pakistan, Samoa, Sri Lanka, and Jordan, among others. And I'm pretty sure the novel was banned in those same places once the movie came out. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion is the most influential anti-Semitic text of all time. Originally mentioned in a Russian newspaper in 1908, Protocols is allegedly a stolen transcript of a meeting between powerful Jewish leaders. In the meeting, they talked about their evil plan for world domination, and it's been used for over a century to prove that there's this big Jewish conspiracy to take over the world. But the thing is, no one has actually seen the original document. The Protocols have been mentioned and referenced and quoted in a bunch of different writings since the early 20th century, but the actual manuscript with the meeting minutes, that's nowhere to be found. In 1921, a British journalist revealed that most of the stuff in the protocols was actually directly ripped 
from a political satire called The Dialogue in Hell between Machiavelli and Montesquieu, which would make the protocols one of the very first examples of source, trust me bro, in history. But hey, that didn't stop people from using the book as evidence of a secret Jewish cabal hellbent on global domination. Henry Ford, the famous car guy, he loved protocols so much that he published a series of articles based on them called The International Jew which Hitler loved, he was a big fan. Layla. After Hindu nationalists destroyed a mosque in India, Muslims in Bangladesh were pissed, and this sparked a wave of anti-Hindu riots. Layla is a novel by a woman named Teslina Nasrin, by a family who was forced to flee Bangladesh after being attacked by Muslims. The book was very critical of the riots, and of Islam, and Sharia law. So, uh, yeah, not very popular in Bangladesh to say the least. Not only is the book banned, but Muslim extremists were calling for Taslima's execution. One group of extremists even threatened to quote, let loose thousands of poisonous snakes in the capital unless she was executed. Bro, what kind of Scooby-Doo ass plot is that? She was forced to go into hiding and eventually went to exile in Sweden, where she lived for over a decade. She's currently still banned from going to Bangladesh. Big River, Big Sea. Untold Stories of 1949 details the aftermath of the Chinese Civil War that ended with the communists in power and the nationalists fleeing to Taiwan. The book is banned in mainline China for talking about the not so chill things that the Red Army was doing at the time. A World of Strangers was written in 1958 by a South African author Nadine Gordimer about a rich white kid who befriends an African kid during apartheid. It was banned by the South African government for 12 years for suggesting that maybe, perhaps, they shouldn't be so horrible to black people. 60 years later, Coming Through the Rye is an unofficial sequel to Catcher in the Rye written by some Swedish schmuck in 2009. The book was written without ever contacting J.D. Salinger who wrote the original Catcher in the Rye, but somehow it got published in the UK. It picks up 60 years after the original book, hence the name. In this one, Holden, now 76 years old, escapes from a nursing home and is on the run. By most accounts, it's a terrible book and basically just shitty fan fiction and doesn't do the original one justice. J.D. Salinger actually sued the book's author, John California, stupid fucking name by the way. Before passing away in 2010, he was able to successfully ban the book from being distributed in the United States. Pierre Valere was a French-Canadian journalist and member of the Quebec Liberation Front, a Marxist-Leninist terror group seeking an independent Quebec. The group was responsible for multiple bombings, kidnappings, and straight-up assassinations in the 1960s, including the kidnapping and murder of the Vice Premier of Quebec. And uh, this is insane, bro. Like, I never heard of any of this stuff. But then again, I never think about Canada nor should anyone else. After the assassination of the Canadian premier, Pierre went to prison where he wrote his most infamous book called The White N-Words of America, which compares the struggles of the French Canadians in Quebec to that of African Americans, which just on its face seems ridiculous. Cause let's be real, the biggest struggles that French Canadians have to deal with is having the goofiest accents on the planet earth. But he was somehow able to get the book published in France and it was outright banned in Canada for basically supporting terrorism. Christianity Not Mysterious, written by Irish philosopher John Tolan in 1696. The book talks about how pretty much everything in the Bible can be explained rationally, and that in his words, there is nothing in the gospel contrary to reason, nor above it, and no Christian doctrine can be properly called a mystery. He only released a few copies of his book, and he became public enemy number one in England. His books were being publicly burned by English authorities and had orders to arrest him on sight. So he escaped to Ireland, but the Irish didn't want him neither. Some members of the Irish parliament even suggested that they should burn him at the stake. So he said, fuck that and went back to England, took his chances there. Somehow he avoided getting arrested until he, you know, became an old man. The Gulag Archipelago talks about what life was like inside the Soviet forced labor camp system, AKA Gulags. The author, Alexander, there's no fucking way I'm going to attempt to pronounce his shitty last name. Alexander spent eight years in the gulag in the 50s after criticizing Stalin. After his release, he spent 10 years secretly researching and interviewing former prisoners. The book released to massive success, selling 30 million copies, but obviously it made the Soviet Union look bad and the government officials couldn't have that. So the KGB tried to assassinate Alex with ricin, but he survived and eventually he was forced out of the Soviet Union and fled to West Germany and eventually the US. 
Rangila Rasul. In the 1920s, there was a lot of tension between British India's Hindu and Muslim communities. During this time, a lot of books were written by both sides with the intention of insulting the other side's religion. One of these books was called Rangila Rasul, which satirized the marriages of the Prophet Muhammad. It was written by Hindus as a response to another book written by the Muslims that depicted the Hindu goddess Sita as a prostitute. As if things weren't bad enough between the Muslims and the Hindus, this book made everything 10 times worse. Fights were breaking out between the two sides more and more often. The name of the authors was never released, but the book's editor and publishers were both assassinated by Muslim fanatics. After that, Mahatma Gandhi himself came out against the book and said that it was only written to inflame tensions and basically both sides needed to chill out. After a few months of the back and forth, the Indian government eventually came in and not only banned the book, but made blasphemy illegal in India. And it's still banned there to this very day. Great Soul, Mahatma Gandhi and his struggle with India is a biography about Gandhi detailing his time spent in South Africa and how he became the Mahatma or Great Soul as he was known in India. The Indian government unanimously voted to ban the book because they thought that the author was insinuating that Gandhi might have had a gay relationship with some German guy. Put him down, take him out. Knife fighting techniques from Folsom Prison. I mean, the title says it all. It was written by a Christian pastor and former in I mean, the title says it all. It was actually written by a Christian pastor and former inmate, Don Pentecost. The book was banned in the UK because it contains information useful to criminals. Our Friend the King is a book about Moroccan King Hassan II. The goal of the book was to show that the modern democratic facade of the king was just hiding a brutal dictatorship. The book is banned in Morocco, but King Hassan tried to get it banned in France as well. He tried to offer to buy all copies of the book, but that didn't work. The book single-handedly destroyed relations between France and Morocco, which before its release were really good. Truth for Germany, The Guilt Question About the Second World War is a book that disputes Germany's guilt for the Second World War. Basically, the thesis of the book is, what if Germany wasn't the bad guy? What if, what if all this Holocaust stuff was overblown? It was written by Udo Wallendi, a German journalist, historian, World War II veteran, and Holocaust denier. Yep, there it is. In 1979, the book was placed in Germany's federal department for media harmful to young persons. In 1979, the book was placed in Germany's federal department for media harmful to young persons until it was finally removed in 1994 after a long legal battle. Goat Days is a novel about an Indian man named Narjeeb who goes to Saudi Arabia for work. But once he gets there, he realizes things were not as advertised. Upon arrival, his passport was taken from him and he's put to work on a goat farm in the desert. Najib is basically a slave who's forced to do backbreaking manual labor for three years before finally being allowed to go back to India. It's based on the real life experiences of Najib Mohammed. The book is banned in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates for criticizing the use of what some people have called modern slavery. All literature from China. The Indonesian dictator Suharto really did not like China. He hated them so much that he banned any and all literature from China during his reign from 1967 to 1998 out of fear of Chinese influence spreading to Indonesia. On the origins of perpetual use of legislative powers of the apostolic kings of Hungary in matters ecclesiastical. Long ass title, bro. Could have easily shortened that. It was written by a Hungarian nobleman named Adam Kolar who was a big fan of Maria Theresa, the ruler of the Habsburg kingdoms, which at the time included Austria, Hungary, Transylvania, Milan, Croatia, and a bunch of other places. The book basically said that the Habsburgs should rule over the Catholic Church and that they should essentially be the supreme power in Europe. The Papal States were not very happy about this document and they denounced it as heretical. Adam, as well as Maria Therese, got a ton of blowback from the rest of the European nobility and Maria had to go into damage control mode. She banned the book and forced Adam to apologize. God damn, man, even in 1765, you couldn't escape cancel culture. The Vatican placed Adam's stinky book on their Index Librorum Prohibitorum, or the Index of Prohibited Books, where it stayed for 200 years. The God's Laugh on Mondays is an Iranian novel about a man who may or may not be gay. I can't find any PDFs of it online in English, but apparently it also mocked Islamic activists. On August 23rd, 1995, a group of Islamic extremists burned down the publishing house that released the book. Also, an employee of the bookshop 
was allegedly kidnapped and tortured before they found out he didn't really have anything to do with it. The book was banned in Iran after this incident. 